My name is Tarmac and thanks for checking out my review of Styx Shards of Darkness on PC. The Styx sequel is a lot like the original as you would expect. It's developed by Cyanide Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive also as you would expect. The game is out March 14th on Steam for a base price of $40 US and on PS4 and Xbox One for $50. This footage was recorded on an i7-5820K with 16GB of RAM and a GTX 1070 video card. I also did receive review code for the purpose of this review. So we're going to talk about gameplay first and I'm going to open with something that pissed me off and yet as I played, because I'm no good at stealth games, became indispensable and made the whole thing much more fun for me. Styx includes a pre-order bonus for a pair of items from the original game, the Akinash set. And the dagger disintegrates corpses of NPCs that you kill immediately, leaving no trace. This bothers me for two reasons. First of all, why in the hell would you give pre-order customers an item that is blatantly overpowered like that in a game about stealth, hiding bodies and other similar aggro-based mechanics? And second, why is the game more fun when I don't have to think about that stuff? This is a real double-edged dagger for me because I want to complain about it, but then I went and I used it and I had more fun. So either I'm playing the game the way that it wasn't meant to be played or the way it was, and in either case, the pre-order bonus doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like the previous Styx iteration, you are an incredibly skilled but fragile goblin who can talk. Open combat is usually a terrible idea, though there are skill upgrades that widen the window for parrying incoming attacks or dodging incoming crossbow bolts. Normally you're expected to approach situations from a very slow, stealthy way, and trying to blaze through a level will result in you turning poor little green sticks into a pincushion. This really is the game's strength, because at the end of the mission you feel like a badass for making it through an area with tons of enemies relatively unscathed. From a control and mobility standpoint, there are some mechanical issues, one in particular that I have a tough time describing, but is related to how your character moves and interacts with the world for things like ledges and other terrain. It feels almost cheap. When you play a stealthish game like Assassin's Creed, the movement is fluid and just feels really good to play. But in Styx, the movement is just a tad more rigid in many circumstances. Climbing ropes is a much more jerky motion, grabbing ledges is easy to misjudge, and the window for error seems much lower. But by the same token, the low ground stuff, sliding under a table and following an NPC that's walking by works really well. As I said, I have a hard time describing exactly what it is here that didn't feel good, but it's just a general feeling that the movement of the character wasn't as polished as perhaps it could have been. That's not to say it's bad, just that it could have been better. I'd also like to say that the game has the usual problem stealth games do, where there's no way those NPCs would just go back to their normal pathing after they've seen you once. This doesn't bother me all that much because in my opinion, it's just a reality of how stealth games need to be made, but I could see it bugging some people so I thought I'd mention it. Styx is outfitted with his dagger, sand to put out torches from a distance, glass objects that distract nicely, one hit kill darts, and numerous other traps and stealthy shenanigans if you spec your goblin assassin the right way. He can spawn a clone which can distract enemies just like in the first Styx game, and you lose less health if a clone dies than you would have taken yourself, so that's good. Personally, I found that specking into stealth was the most fun because I really enjoy making use of the amber-based invisibility. Amber, if you're not aware, is the mana bar of sticks. You can craft or find amber and health potions as well, but can only carry a few of any of those implements, forcing characters to use them sparingly in more difficult situations. While I do have some reservations about things like the controls and the pre-order, please don't take this for a serious, vicious critique. None of these are deal breakers, and as far as gameplay for a $40 AA level game, it's good. What I really want to call out as incredible amid those good and rough elements is the level design. Each area is unique in both its look and feel relative to the races and social status of the denizens who make these areas their home. From the slum like Thoban with its rotting boards and hanging ropes, to Korangar, the elf city in a mountain full of straight line stone cutting pedways and torchlight, each area has plenty of ways a stealthy goblin can make his way through the zone, with even main objectives having multiple totally different paths to success. These levels are really where the gameplay is allowed to shine. I was less impressed by the story though. The basic premise of the story is that Styx is given a job to do, he has to steal a thing, and through the next few levels he goes from failure to failure with everything getting worse as you progress. I'm not all that concerned about the negative progression style storytelling, but the overall plot is a bit underwhelming. Though I will admit that there is a section involving elves that is a really great change to the traditional elf style lore. 
All that said, when comparing story related elements to the original sticks and what I've seen from it, I do want to commend a solid improvement in voice acting. There are still some NPC lines that are really bad and felt like they were delivered by friends and family of the dev team rather than professional voice actors, but for the most part the VO is good. The world looks beautiful and level design matches the theme of divided races vying for supremacy, each with a style and layout of their own. Shards of Darkness has some really amazing backdrops for levels. More than once, I just stopped to look around because it really looked gorgeous. Everything is well textured and detailed. The only issue that I have with the graphics is frankly the NPC faces. Styx looks great, expressive and really well done, as you would expect for a character that you're going to be looking at in some way or another for the next 20 hours of your life. The other NPCs, well, they don't look nearly as good and some of them are pretty bad. Outside of the cutscenes though, you're not likely to look at NPC faces when driving a dagger into their backs. I'd also like to give props for the soundtrack, which while one might be hard pressed to pull out an individual song to listen to outside of the game, the almost dirty symphonic music is absolutely suiting to the game and the levels within. Now just to mention this briefly, I did have some issues in performance when using MSI Afterburner to capture video, up to and including a full on system hard lock. However, after switching back to Nvidia Shadowplay and just using Afterburner to put the performance numbers overlaid on the screen, any of those issues were completely gone. So I just wanted to bring that up as a little aside. Styx maintained a steady 60 frames per second on the highest settings after that. The only issue performance wise that I have is that the game takes a solid minute from hitting play in Steam until you're in the game, which granted is not as awful as it could be, but it also isn't great. It's got full controller support, but I played it on a mouse and keyboard out of preference. Keyboard keys can be rebound, but the controller cannot. Audio options include sliders for music, effects, interface, and voice, and difficulty is handled both by a difficulty option in-game, but also through the usual UI elements like turning detection icons off. And finally, as an Unreal Engine game, the display options include resolution support up to 4K, draw distance, anti-aliasing, post-processing, shadows, textures, effects, and V-Sync. It doesn't get down into the weeds on settings, which isn't all that bothersome. Sure, having five different sliders for shadow quality would be great for those who want it, but I don't have time to try to perfect settings. It's also worth mentioning that the PC version of the game has higher quality textures, better anti-aliasing, and shadow distance, so props for letting the platform do what it's capable of. Before I summarize, I need to explain one thing that is not part of this review. Shards of Darkness includes a co-op mode as well, where you can bring someone into your game or put yourself out there to play with others. The developers asked that no footage of co-op be included in reviews due to a launch day patch which will fix stability and performance issues. So on that basis, I am reviewing this game as if co-op doesn't exist. But let me say, two people running around assassinating everything in sight does sound pretty amazing. Styx is a stealth lover's stealth game, fragile and useless in bright areas, deadly and powerful in shadows. The lovable, sarcastic, fourth wall breaking goblin cracks wise throughout the whole game and is a real treat to play. The controls aren't as great as I'd like and the sound is decent, but where this game really shines is in the levels. Each level is full of pathways and avenues to your goals and to help avoid enemies along the way. The areas are beautiful, but the faces are a bit less beautiful. Styx Shards of Darkness is a really good game that gave me a solid 20 hours of play and unlike a lot of other games I could mention, despite being released on Steam, it has been confirmed by the developer to be DRM free. So what we have here is a AAA quality game at a $40 price on PC with no DRM, beautiful areas, great level design, mildly inconsistent voice acting, and a talking goblin that flips you off when you die. What are you waiting for? Go buy it. Signed, sealed, and stamped recommended. This has been my review of Sticks Shards of Darkness by Cyanide Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive. It's out March 14th on PC via Steam with a $40 US based price and Xbox One and PlayStation 4 for 50 sans launch week discounts. All footage was recorded using review code provided by the developer on an i7 5820K, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1070 video card. Thanks for checking out the review. If you like the channel, make sure you're subscribed. And if you really like the channel, consider supporting me on Patreon and getting into the fancy backer chat on Discord. My name is Tarmac. Cheers. Bye-bye.